2023 was an interesting year of games for me. I didn't finish as many as usual, and while I felt bad about that for a while, in hindsight, I've decided it's okay as I really spent time with the ones I did play, so I felt confident in giving this list. This does mean there are things from a lot of my favorite series here which I usually try to avoid doing too much of, but the things I loved were naturally from series I already enjoy most in my JRPG time, so if you know my channel, this list might not be that surprising, and if you don't, I hope to show some of the cute, emotional, and colorful games that helped shape my 2023, even if it really is just a whole lot of Atelier. That year isn't getting any younger at this point, so I think it's definitely time to give my thoughts, so let's get into my top games and game of the year of 2023. Usually when I make game of the year lists, I really try to keep it to one game per series, but some of the most JRPG fun I had last year was with one of these Atelier games, and the other I've been playing daily and enjoying since September, making it feel wrong to not include both here. So while this probably isn't the last you'll hear of Atelier in this video, these two lighter Atelier experiences helped make for simple fun that colored multiple days of my 2023. I mentioned Atelier Resleriana a lot lately because the way it is means that I play it daily, but with my love for the new project, protagonist, especially Resna, combined with the way it touches the Atelier universe that I'm already in love with, I loved it the instant it came out, and I'm so happy to see it carrying on the legacy of many Atelier games well, even if it's in a simpler form than newer Atelier games. I did talk about my time management arc with it recently, but a lot of that is because I enjoyed my time enough when the Japanese version was out to want to juggle the English server too, and a lot of this is because I enjoy its battle system that reminds me of the timeline one in Trills, the events let me see more moments with the Atelier characters I love, and I'm also enjoying Resleriana's story too, with the two new girls currently in their early moments in a story that clearly has more to tell. It's not as deep as the alchemy and console Ateliers, but that isn't what I'm looking for in my pocket, and the scratch of the Atelier itch daily with shades of magic, mana, and alchemy is something I like a lot, and I'm glad to see others enjoying Now It's Out in English too. With its half-year anniversary coming up in Japan, I hope we keep seeing more great story arcs and use of friendly updates, and hope more people give it a chance as a cinematic Atelier game that the team has clearly put a lot into. I also wonder if my enjoyment of its systems is thanks to the Atelier Mari remake, a game I had a lot of fun with in July thanks to its simplistic take on Atelier. While other entries last year showed what Atelier can do with complexity and open fields, Mari showed the series' roots in a palatable form in its remake, giving cute Nendroid-like takes on its designs for both cuteness and upscaling purposes, and letting more simplistic gameplay shine in a friendly way, letting the pressure of the time limit be removed, and instead making Mari feel like a cute world of gathering and streamlined synthesis in its 10-hour journey. It also came to me at the right time as I spent most of July sick with an unenjoyable virus, and its blend of mechanics from the series I love in a more simple way seemed to be exactly what the doctor ordered, and it really brightened my days as I got addicted to questing and taking down big bosses and mastering whatever I could in each subsequent playthrough. It's a game I still hope to get back to at some point to make a final elusive poony let me get the platinum, but I also get a lot of what I liked about it with a little more complexity in Resleriana that makes me think there is a place for these more simple Ateliers between titles, and I would happily see another remake like this with Ellie or Judy who I've really come to like in Res. Depth and complexity and synthesis and battles in Atelier are ultimately still big things that make this series great, and just to be clear, are still things I still want to see in console entries, but last year is different takes on the world I love, these two games gave me plenty of hours of fun, and I'm already putting a bunch more time into Res this year that has me excited to see where it and the series as a whole will continue. It was last year I think I truly confirmed Trails is one of my favorite series, and its many releases helped solidify this, even if I only finished one in full. Trails to Azure probably would have been here if I'd finished it, as I continue to enjoy its world now, with Trails to Reverie also cool to have taken a peek at. But what didn't require me to be completely plugged into all of Trails' lore was the spin-off The Legend of Nayuta that tells its own story and proves that while lore is great in the Trails series, it can also tell a really good story without, with the epic Legend of Nayuta being a great JRPG story in its own right. It features all the good parts of JRPG stories, with heavy twists and turns, characters that make you love them only to be struck by peril, and questions of who is friend or foe that make it engaging to play through. And if you're a fan of Falcom games beyond Trails, the gameplay has a cool kind of platformer cross ease feeling that feels satisfying in its boss battles that don't hold back. Best of all, it has its own self-contained law that will reward you like other Trails games if you spend time walking around town getting to know its people, so whether in side quests or 
making sure my dog was happy, every piece of its story came together for another satisfying Trills experience. Based around a new group of characters, I became invested in as much as the rest. There are rumors that it will eventually tie into future parts of the Trills series, but for now, I love that Naita is an option for people curious about Trills who maybe feel intimidated by its bigger world, with its 20 hours that don't need you to play a thing before it, while still letting you get a taste of the essence of the series. Its level-based, well-thought-out areas were a lot of fun to jump around in as I played through to learn more about its world, and whether I see these characters again in the post-game or in a future Trails, I'll always be glad that this entry came west so that we could all finally play it. After adoring director Fuyuki Hayashi's video game Crystar years ago, when its spiritual successor Cry Machina was announced with its more futuristic look, I knew I absolutely had to play it before 2023 was out. It was the last thing I played last year, and I'm so glad I did, as its emotional journey with its robot cast gave me exactly what I love from his games, but with better gameplay and story flow to make it feel like the better of the two. Its group of main characters are given all the dialogue you'd ever need to make them shine, and the story twists along the way had me ready to fight for them at every turn, trying to help them become human and gain some sort of peace in their existence in a post-humanity world. The whole story is an interesting tale of fighting against the systems put in place before their consciences were chosen to end up there thousands of years in the future, fighting to be recognized as humans, and with themes of death and family at the forefront while they inhabit robot bodies that shouldn't have much to do with either, it makes for an intriguing story complemented by satisfying boss battles and a linear flow that respects the player's time where others felt Christ star didn't. I'm very invested in Hayashi's work as a director at this point as I feel like the staples of his games with lots of written law, emotive moments, and beautifully dark visuals are something I enjoy playing with and the overall style of. I'm glad Cry Machina could continue these themes in a great way that has his next work being something I definitely want to play, and before that, I hope more people spend time with the interesting world Cry Machina has to offer. My 4 and 5 on this list, along with my entire channel since I discovered it, make it no secret that I enjoy the Atelier series, so it's probably no surprise that Atelier Rise of 3 is my game of the year for 2023, but I really do think it deserves it as a standout entry in the series. Often in these lists, Atelier entries just miss the top spot for me, with games like Xenoblade getting them over the years, as what I tend to love most are games that fully immerse me in exploration and mechanics. This time though, I'm super happy to say that Rise of 3 did that mostly successfully last year, with me often running off the beaten track whether it be for quests that pop up or for treasure spotted in the distance, and I can remember so many times where I was supposed to be doing story but was taken by the curiosity of what I'd see if I'd kept running, and with things like point systems and the discovery of recipes and things unlocked in my collection of keys supporting this. Its freedom of exploration mixed with all of its systems made it easily the most fun I've had in an Atelier and in a JRPG last year, and I enjoyed every second of synthesis, finding materials, and the loving care put into introducing new characters and old to give a lost bit of love to a great trilogy. I still remember the first weekend I played with Rise of 3 and when the first large map opened up where I rolled dolphins, tested out keys, found small events, and hidden areas that all rewarded me for my time. Rise's special abilities made this more fun and had the world open up further as you got more, and mixed with the best versions of Atelier's synthesis and battle systems in true final Atelier style, I never cared if I spent all day playing it for my PS5 to tell me in percentage form that I hadn't progressed the story, as I was having so much fun getting immersed in what felt like a wondrous world. My only complaint would be that I can't experience my first playthrough with it again, as I find its active time system actually not the easiest to jump back into if you get out of the rhythm with it, which is why I haven't completed its extra map DLC yet. But maybe in a few years, I'll get time to play through it and the whole trilogy again with fresh eyes, and I do hope to do so, as it's an incredible Atelier game that shows what the series is capable of. With Gus's habit of improving the with console titles and practicing their cinematic scenes in Resleriana, I think we can expect great things for the next Atelier console release, and what we got in Rise of 3's final moments show me that the team is getting better at making stories that end feeling like they're wrapped up exactly as they should. Atelier Rise of 3 is my game of 2023, a fantastic Atelier and a great way to wrap up the Rise of Trilogy, so if anyone here hasn't touched Atelier and is curious about it, the whole trilogy is well worth it, with this final part of the series serving as the perfect party to end it with. And speaking of endings, that's my better late than never list of 2023 favorites before I play my first game for this year, and with that, I hope we see more games this year with great exploration and deep worlds with wondrous stories to get immersed in, as another fun year of games continues day by day. 
you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorites from last year were and what you're excited about this year. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this and ring that bell to get notifications on whatever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media on X, Facebook, and Instagram all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below and until next time, thank you. Bye!